Today we will continue to practice solving two-step inequalities. It is recommended that when solving inequalities and equations, that you should do order of operations in reverse. But we will see today that this is not a requirement. So let's get started. Let's first practice with a few inequalities. Again, it is a best practice when solving equations and inequalities to do order of operations, or PEMDAS, in reverse. So our first step will be to undo any addition or subtraction to the unknown variable. The second step is to undo any multiplication or division. And we'll see later that the next step would be to undo any powers or exponents or roots. And then finally, we'd undo the operations in parentheses. But we're not there yet. So for this first problem, the variable x is multiplied to negative 4, and 7 is subtracted from it. Our first step will be to undo this subtraction. To undo subtraction, we use addition. So we're going to add 7. That results in negative 4x on the left side. For what we do to one side, we have to do the other. So we're going to add 7 to the right side as well. That gives us 32. And then we bring down that inequality sign. Now we'll undo the multiplication. We undo multiplication by division. So we're going to divide both sides by negative 4. We get x on the left. 32 divided by negative 4, that's negative 8 on the right. We divided by a negative, so we will switch the direction of the inequality. To graph this, we'll put an open circle at negative 8 to show that negative 8 is not a solution to this inequality. It's less than, not less than or equal to. And then we'll shade everything to the left are smaller than negative 8. Let's quickly check inequality first. So at x equal to negative 8, we get negative 4 times negative 8 minus 7 is greater than 25. Again, what we want are the two sides to be equal to each other as we check at the equality point. So this is 32 minus 7 greater than 25. And then this is 25 greater than 25. Again, this is not true in this example because negative 8 is not a part of the solution, but it is where the two sides of the inequality are equal. So it's the boundary or the edge of our inequality. Let's check another point. We'll check at x equal to negative 10. That's negative 4 times negative 10 minus 7 greater than 25. 40 minus 7 greater than 25. 33 greater than 25. And that's a true statement. In the second problem, we now have fractions. But that doesn't matter. We're going to solve this inequality in the same way. So the first step is to undo this subtraction with addition. So we're going to add 4 to both sides. So the first step for me when I add this is to convert this into an improper fraction. So the new numerator would be 5 times 2, which is 10, plus 1, which is 11. And then we'll keep the denominator, so 11 halves. So 5 and 1 half is the same as 11 halves. And then we're going to add 4, and 4 is the same as 8 halves, so we now have a common denominator, less than or equal to y over 8. Adding this, we're going to get 19 halves, less than or equal to y over 8. We have now undone that subtraction, took a bit of time. So now we'll undo this division by multiplying both sides by 8. We can do some simplification first before we multiply. So 4 times 19, well that's 76, less than or equal to y. And then we'll rewrite this so the variable 
is on the left, so we get y greater than or equal to 76. Graphing this, we'll put a closed circle at 76 because 76 is a solution. It's in the solution set. And then we'll shade everything greater than 76. So all numbers greater than or equal to 76 are solutions to this inequality. Again, we will check at equality first, so at 76. So we have 5 and 1 half less than or equal to 76 over 8 minus 4. Convert this to 11 halves again, less than or equal to. We can simplify 76 over 8 to 19 over 2 minus 4. And then we have 11 halves less than or equal to 19 over 2 minus 8 over 2. And this is 11 halves less than or equal to 11 halves. And that's a true statement in this case because where they are equal is included in the solution set. Let's test another point. We'll test 80 in this case. So at y equal to 80, we get 5 and 1 halves less than or equal to 80 over 8 minus 4. Now we have 5 and 1 half less than or equal to. Now I chose 80 because when I divide it by 8, I get an integer, the integer 10, as opposed to a fraction. Nothing against fractions, but sometimes it's easier to work with integers. So now we have 5 and 1 half less than or equal to 6, and that's a true statement. Reversing the order of operations to solve equations and inequalities is a best practice and often makes the math simpler. It's like how we dress ourselves. In the morning, when you get dressed, first you put your pants on and then your shoes. But in the evening, we reverse that process. We do the shoes first and then the pants. But can you take your pants off without removing your shoes? Yeah. It makes things more difficult, but it is still possible. Same here when we're solving equations and inequalities. Let's first solve this inequality like we did previously. So we have 3x minus 7 less than or equal to 17. So first we'll undo addition and subtraction. That means we're going to add 7 to both sides. We end up with 3x less than or equal to 24. And then we'll undo multiplication or division. So we're going to divide both sides by 3. We end up with x less than or equal to 8. This is reverse order of operations. So now let's solve the same inequality, but we will not do reverse order of operations. So the unknown variable x is multiplied by 3, and then 7 is subtracted from it. So we're going to undo this multiplication by 3 first. And to undo multiplication, you use division. And so we're going to divide the left side by 3. We have to divide the entire left side by 3. And then what we do to one side, we have to do to the other. We'll simplify down this left side by rewriting it as 3x over 3 minus 7 over 3 less than or equal to 17 thirds. So no change on the right. 3x over 3 well, that's x. It's no longer multiplied by 3. So we have x minus 7 thirds less than or equal to 17 thirds. Now we'll undo the subtraction by adding 7 thirds to both sides. We end up with x less than or equal to 24 thirds. And this simplifies down to x less than or equal to 8.
we're solving the same inequality, so we get the same answer. But one method added a level of complexity to solving this problem that just wasn't needed. So in most cases, using order of operations in reverse is a best practice for solving both equations and inequalities. So for this third problem with fractions, the first step I'm going to do is convert these mixed numbers to improper fractions. So we have negative 3 fourths x plus 3 halves is greater than or equal to 9 fourths. I will do the best practice by undoing addition and subtraction first. So subtract 3 halves from both sides. We have negative 3 fourths x on the left side is greater than or equal to, then this is 9 fourths minus 6 fourths. So we have negative 3 fourths x greater than or equal to 3 fourths. The next step is to undo this multiplication of negative 3 fourths. I'm going to put this left side in parentheses, and we're going to multiply by negative 4 thirds, the reciprocal of the coefficient. What we do to one side, we have to do the other. So we get x on the left side, and then on the right side, these all cancel, we end up with negative 1. And since we multiplied by a negative, we're going to switch the direction of the inequality. We end up with x less than or equal to negative 1. Graphing this, we're going to put a closed circle at negative 1, and we are less than or equal to negative 1. We will shade everything to the left of negative 1. Checking where the two sides are equal first, we have x equal to negative 1. Plugging that value into the original inequality, we end up with 3 fourths plus 6 fourths. We get 9 fourths greater than or equal to 2 and 1 fourths. Rewriting this improper fraction, you get 2 and 1 fourths greater than or equal to 2 and 1 fourths. The two sides are equal. This is a true expression as well. Let's check another value in our solution set. We'll do negative 4. So we have x equal to negative 4. We will plug that into our inequality. These 4s are going to cancel out. That leaves us with 3 plus 1 and 1 half greater than or equal to 2 and 1 fourth. When we add this, we get 4 and 1 half greater than or equal to 2 and 1 fourth. And that is a true statement. With this last problem, as we have seen previously when solving equations and inequalities, the first step is to simplify down each side independently before trying to solve it. So in this case, we have 5y plus 2y, and these are like terms. So this becomes 7y minus 3 less than negative 24. So now both sides are simplified down, and we can solve this inequality. We'll add 3 to both sides to undo subtraction. That's 7y less than negative 21. And then divide both sides by 7. To get rid of that multiplication by 7, we have y less than negative 3. Put an open circle at negative 3, and then shade to the left. The solution is all numbers less than negative 3. Testing at negative 3 first. So at y equal to negative 3, we will plug that back into the original inequality. And then we use order of operations to simplify down each side. So we'll do the multiplication steps first. And then addition and subtraction from left to right. So this is negative 21 and then negative 24 less than negative 24. Again, where the two sides are equal is not in the solution. So this is not a true statement. 
but negative 3 is where the two sides are equal. And then picking another point, I'll pick negative 10. So y equal to negative 10. We will plug this value back into the original inequality. Using order of operations to simplify it down, we'll do the multiplication step first. And then add, or in this case, subtract everything. We end up with negative 73 less than negative 24. And that's a true statement. A great way to learn is to practice on your own. We will discuss in a bit, but go ahead and pause your screen and do these four problems. For all four of these, I did use that best practice of doing order of operations in reverse. So first, undoing addition and subtraction, followed by multiplication or division. So to undo subtraction of eight, we add eight to both sides. To undo this division by negative six, we multiply both sides by negative six. We did multiply by a negative. So we have to switch the direction of the inequality, resulting in 24 less than or equal to a. And then putting the variable on the left side, we now have a greater than or equal to 24. For this second problem, the first step was to simplify down the right side first by combining like terms giving us negative 19 less than negative 6b plus 5. We'll then undo the addition of 5 by subtracting 5 from both sides. And then we have multiplication of negative 6, so we'll divide both sides by negative 6. Since we divided by a negative, we will change the direction of the inequality, and then we'll rewrite this with the variable on the left side. Looking at an example with decimals, again, it makes the math a little bit more complicated, but the steps are still the same. We'll first subtract 3 tenths from both sides, giving us negative 2c less than or equal to 2.6, and then undo the multiplication by negative 2 with division of negative 2. We divide by a negative, so we will switch the direction of the inequality sign resulting in c greater than or equal to negative 1.3. And then finally, we have subtraction of 1 third, so we will add 1 third to both sides. To complete this addition, I did find a common denominator of 3. This simplifies down to 2 thirds d less than 7 thirds. So we are multiplying by 2 thirds, so we divide by 2 thirds which is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal, 3 halves, resulting in d less than 7 halves. Continue practicing solving inequalities, and I'll see you in the next video.